Welcome into the Wolverine Recruiting Show. I'm your host, EJ Holland. Alongside me is my co-captain, Tim Verghese. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little different today. Uh, as you may notice, Clayton Safey is not on the video. He is busy with the Jawan Howard situation and will not be with us this week. Uh, we're not going to talk about the Jawan Howard situation <laughs> on this show. We'll stick to Michigan recruiting. So we're going to do something a little fun. We're going to do a seven-on-seven seven draft of Michigan targets, kind of talk a little bit about why uh, we pick who we pick, and we're going to build out our teams. It is seven-on-seven seven season, so it, it should be a lot of fun uh, to talk about some of the Michigan guys we're going to take. So the way this is going to work is it's going to be a snake draft, so I'm going to pick first because uh, I'm the elder statesman and I'm just stealing the number one pick away from Tim. So I will have the number one pick. Tim will then have two picks in a row, and then it'll be me. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll go like that, and we'll build out our rosters. So it'll be seven guys on offense, seven guys on defense. And the, if you're not familiar with seven on seven, it's a quarterback, a running back, a tight end, um, and then four receivers or three receivers slash an athlete. It's kind of what we're taking on the defensive side of the ball. It's one linebacker and basically six DBs or five DBs and an athlete. Uh, so that's kind of the format of our teams. And then afterwards you can vote and uh, or leave a comment here and let us know who has the better seven on seven team uh, after we're done with the draft. But before we dive into the first pick, uh, I do wanna remind you guys that the Wolverine recruiting magazine is out or actually the recruiting edition of the Wolverine magazine is out now. You can order it at, um, at the Wolverine on demand Dot com and what the recruiting edition is it's a hundred pages it has all your up-to-date recruiting information in-depth analysis and breakdowns of the entire 2022 signing class some really great features I actually just ran our andrew gentry feature on the wolverine where i went out and spent some time with him on his mission in utah uh we profile everybody we break everybody down it's a really really awesome um awesome memorabilia item but also just a, a great content item to have uh, around the house if you're old school and you like flipping through magazines like i do i think it's it's a really cool uh item to have if you're a michigan fan it's a must-have item if you're a michigan fan so go over to the wolverine on demand and get your copy today um it's only eight bucks if you sign up for a single issue uh but you can also sign up for a yearly issue we a yearly issue we actually do uh 12 issues a year so you'd get all of those uh for 67 dollars um so go over to the wolverine on demand.com let's go ahead and dive into the draft tim um it is not smart to draft a quarterback number one because you can only draft one at that position but i need my guy leading the team so I'm going to go ahead with the number one overall pick, select Dante Moore out of Detroit King, plays with Club 7-on-17, seven Max X. Um, reason I'm picking Dante here is, again, I just I think he's obviously the only quarterback on the board in Michigan's 2023 class, but he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's a tremendous leader. He has all the intangibles you want. He's Michigan's top priority for a reason. Michigan's right up there uh, along with Notre Dame and Michigan State, Penn State, Miami, and a few others in that recruitment. But Dante Moore, uh, again, he's everything I want in a quarterback. There's a reason he's really the only quarterback on Michigan's 2023 board. So Dante Moore will lead my seven-on-seven seven team. Good stuff, good stuff. Can't really complain there um, or can't really argue that pick at all. Um, I'd say with my second or my first pick, um, I'm going to go best available on the board um, and, you know, kind of need a lockdown corner. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Cromani McLean off the board. Um, you know, I uh, really like what I saw from Cromani every, every time I've seen uh, South Florida Express. Um, you know, I kind of saw him at Battle Miami, even in muddy conditions. He didn't let up a single catch the entire tournament. Um, you know, he's the number three player in the country in the on three consensus, a five star plus prospect. And the number one corner, obviously, in the country. Um, you know, Michigan is right up there in his top eight. Um, he'll, he'll look to make his first visit here in the next couple months up to Michigan. Um, and, you know, I think Michigan has a chance to to really make some ground on a, it with a successful visit. So, yeah, my first pick, Carmani McClain. Um, 
I guess I have the next pick as well, correct? Yeah, you got the first pick in the second round. Good stuff. So, all right, I'm sticking with the South Florida Express player. Um, going to go ahead and take uh, Carnell Tate. He's my wide receiver. Um, need a wide receiver, need a big body, someone who can kind of stretch the field, win over the middle. Um, you know, I, I, Tate's just one of those do-it-all players, true wide receiver one, um, and uh, kind of a mismatch in seven-on-seven. Seven. So first two picks, Kamani McLean and Carnell Tate. Yeah, I was I was gonna take Carnell Tate if you didn't take him. So I, I thought you might go the Jalen Brown route, and that's who I'm going with. I'm taking uh, Jalen Brown out of Miami Gulliver Prep, who plays with the Miami Immortals on the Club Seven on Seven circuit. Uh, look, Tate and Brown are the top two wide receivers on Michigan's board, and they're both phenomenal talents. I think they both end up as five stars. Uh, I think it's a really close race. I actually wrote on the Wolverine. You know, that's it's really hard to pick one over the other but i am happy in getting jalen brown here you know he's a, a speedy guy that uh runs I, I believe in the in the 10 sixes and 10 or 10 fives in the 100 meter um i saw him out at pylon orlando this year he's just really smooth reminds me of Devonte smith when i covered him as a high school recruit i think dante moore is gonna have a lot of fun throwing the ball over to jalen brown so he is my second round pick i have the um first pick of the third round and man it's it's tough when you look at um when you look at the defensive side of the ball i thought poor monty mcclain was the the clear number one defensive pick and i don't know if there's a clear number two defensive pick so oh man i'm i'm gonna go off the grid a little bit i'm gonna get uh i'm gonna get some versatile help for Dante and the defense at the same time. My running back pick is going to be Trey on Webb. And I know that's not like a super highly touted guy. Trey on is, is a, an all American bowl commit. Um, you know, I could have gone with a guy like a, a Richard young, who's like the number one running back in the country that Michigan's trying to fight for, but I'm going Trey on Webb because he fits the seven on seven mold. He can, catch the, the ball out of the backfield. He plays defensive back for pro impact Jacksonville. Um, he was actually really highly touted as a middle schooler on the defensive side of the ball, but also a great running back. So I just think he's uh, a tremendous athlete that you can kind of throw anywhere, but I am taking him as my running back spot. And if I need somebody to play on the defensive side of the ball, I can also stick uh, stick web there. So I, I think there's a lot of flexibility with him. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, that's a very solid pick, um, especially for the versatility. Um, yeah, so to remind everybody, I have Dante Moore, Jalen Brown, Trey on Webb. So now we're going uh, back-to-back picks with uh, with Tim again. Yep. So, hmm, I'm trying to think, do I go defense or offense here? Um, let's stick offense. Um, okay, I, I, I like this pick. Um, I think I got my big body already. Um, you know, I kind of want to shift to your guy, someone that, you know, kind of wins, um, across the field can be your little dump off option and can stretch the field, um, as well. I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, Yaquis Petaway. Um, Michigan's kind of been working there ever since Josh Gaddis offered him. And even with Gaddis gone, um, you know, Ron Bellamy's kind of taken over that recruitment. I've seen Petaway a good amount of times now, um, just, you know, being down here in Houston, having, you know, kind of seen him a couple of times, um, the last time I saw him was at a seven on seven scrimmage with the uh, KB three. That's the team he's running with this year. Um, and, and he did it all. You know, he was the um, he, he primarily won on just basically a short little pa- a crossing route um, where when, you know, three receivers break out, he's kind of uncovered over the middle. Um, he's super shifty, um, you know, great hands, uh, great at the top of the route, can win, can get up, get upfield pretty quickly. Um, and I, I, I Petaway's got to be my guy right here. So going with Yaquez Petaway. Uh, as my number two, and he joins Carnell Tate as my second wide receiver. My next pick, let me write this down real quick. My next pick, I will flip back to the defensive side of the ball. Um, this isn't a Michigan target, but a, a Michigan commit. Um, I need my linebacker. Uh, I need my guy across the middle of the field. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Raylan Wilson, the Michigan commit, who uh, committed a couple months ago. He's Michigan's top commit in the 2023 class. Um, EJ went and saw him. Um, he's running with Domo this year, I believe, yep. for 7-on-7. Seven seven. Um, and, you know, for a linebacker, he's 
He's really good in coverage. Um, obviously, you don't need a run defender in 7-on-7, seven seven, but he can do that equally as well. Um, you know, in certain 7-on-7 seven seven settings, you have uh, you can have a blitzer on certain plays, and I think Raylan would be pretty good there too. Um, but, you know, he's a, he's a pretty good matchup for some tight ends, some running backs, and even slot, right, slot wide receivers. So going ahead and taking Raylan Wilson off the board as my linebacker. Okay, I want to have an advantage at the tight end position. Um, if you play fantasy football, you know that if you have an advantage at the tight end position, it, it helps immensely. There aren't a lot of tight ends on the board. I am going to take one of the top tight ends in the country in 2023, Riley Williams out of the Portland area. Jim Harbaugh went and saw him during the contact period. Uh, even though Michigan just switched tight end coaches with Grant Newsom taking over, he remains a top priority out West. Uh, again, Harbaugh saw him in person. He's not a guy that we've talked a lot about. He doesn't do a ton of interviews, but he's a big athletic kid. Um, again, from the Portland area. So same area that uh, Michigan went out and got Darius Clemens last cycle. Uh, he plays with KT prep on the seven on seven circuit. I'm actually going to see him here in a couple of weeks. So I think Riley Williams uh, is another nice big target for Dante Moore. I'm just loading up on, uh, on the offensive side of the ball. And I have, uh, I have a big guy in, uh, in Riley Williams. I have a versatile guy in Trayon Webb. I have a smooth guy in Jalen Brown. I need some size. Um, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to give, uh, Dante another, uh, big weapon here. I'm going with an athlete take. This one's going to kind of surprise you a little bit, but I'm going with Nicholas Harbor. Uh, he's an edge target, but he runs like a 10 to eight, 100 meter. He's huge. I'm just going to throw him out on the offensive side of the ball and be like, run, man. And I'm going to have Dante <laughs> just to keep him. He's huge. He's 6'4", he's 225 pounds. He runs a 10 to 8, 100 meter, which is absolutely insane. He's the biggest freak of the 2023 class nationally. He has Michigan in his top group. He visited in the fall. I don't believe he's playing seven on seven because he's doing some AU track stuff or, or just running track for his high school as well. Um, I've heard that some club seven on seven teams are trying to add him for, for nationals. Um, but he's he's a freak. That's why people want him to play seven on seven. So I, <laughs> I'm taking him. I'm I'm getting him on the squad. I I would really love to see Harbor in a seven on seven setting. Um, I'm interested to see what team he ends up playing with if he does end up playing, because uh, I think there are a couple intriguing options out there for sure. That's a great pick. Um, cool. I think it's back to me with with two picks. Um, yeah, back to you. See, I don't have a running back yet. I don't know if I want to take one just yet though. Um, let me go ahead and another KB3 pick here, uh, KB3 pick here. Um, I saw Ethan Nation out at, uh, KB3 scrimmage and I came away really impressed. He's, he's got 50 offers now. He's a sub six foot corners, which is kind of surprising to, to see a, a sub six foot corner have that many offers, but, you know, kind of seeing him in person is pretty easy to see. Um, kind of almost single-handedly in this scrimmage, which is supposed to be just somewhat of a low-key scrimmage between some teams in Houston, you know, getting back on the 7-on-7 seven seven circuit, getting comfortable. And he just single-handedly just elevated the competition, like um, not even from his play standpoint, but just, just you know, kind of talking back and forth with some receivers, talking back and forth with some coaches and parents, um, and really just raised the intensity of the entire event single-handedly. Talked a lot of, you know, talked a lot of crap, but also backed it up consistently. Just every single play, didn't matter where he was lining up. He lined up at safety, slot corner, outside corner, really didn't matter. He was super sticky in coverage. Um, great change of directions, great stop start, stop start ability, just great initial burst off the line and great ball skills. I'm going with Ethan Nation and he's joining Carmani McLean. I, I would say good luck throwing on this team uh, and, and we still have to fill out the rest of the defense. Nice. I think you got uh, another pick, so you, you have the luxury of taking one more. All right. So I guess I'll take my running back here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Jaden Lemar, um, West Coast kid. Uh, I believe he plays with F FSP, correct? Yep, he does. And, uh, you know, he's 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 one of the better two-way running backs, you know, can, can be a threat out of the backfield, can be a threat as a pass catcher. And you really need that in these settings. Um, you know, you can't run the ball. Certain certain tournaments, they let you run the ball. Some, they don't. Um, 
But, you know, for the most part, you need a guy that can pass catch or can catch the ball, can run some routes. And I think Lemar is, of the Michigan targets, I think he's the best one um, that uh, I can take at this point. So I'm going going ahead and take uh, Lemar as my running back. Okay, I'm, it's back to me. I, I have, again, I have the size. I have a, a great versatile weapon in, in Webb. I have a smooth guy in Brown. I need some speed. I need some shifty slot guys. So I'm going, I'm just going to load up my offense. I, I'm all, all of my first seven <laughs> have been on the offensive side of the ball, which probably isn't a smart strategy, but, and, and I also need some, some team chemistry here. So with back-to-back picks, I'm taking Michigan commit Samaj Morgan. I mean, he has plenty of speed. He's quick in space. He has uh, camaraderie with Dante Moore. Actually, they play on the same seven on seven team, Max X. He's known for making some pretty ridiculous catches. He's a great natural pass catcher. He kind of fits a little bit of that A.J. Henning mold. That's why Michigan took him early. Um, he's just that explosive slot guy. So I'm going to take Samaj Morgan again uh, out, of, uh, the, out of the great state of Michigan and out of Max X. And then I'm going to pair him up with another speedy slot guy. Robbie Washington is a sneaky pick. Uh, Michigan recently offered. I just saw him play with the Miami Immortals. Uh, he's a seven-on-seven teammate of my other star receiver, Jalen Brown. I mean, this is such a fun player. I watched him at Pylon Orlando, and then I asked him, I was like, have you seen this Robbie Washington kid? And he said, go watch his film. He's a super fun player. He's a guy that can play running back. He plays uh, a lot of slot. He even plays on the defensive side of the ball. He's just a really, really uh, explosive, electric athlete. So those two guys will be my slot and that kind of slot guys, and that uh, that kind of rounds out my offense. But I think I have plenty of uh, speed uh, and, and size to go along with uh, with Dante Moore. I love it. I love it. Robbie was going to be uh, one of my picks if you didn't grab him. So <laughs> a little jealous there. I like him a lot. Um, who is back to me? I've got two picks. Um, let's see. I think I can take my other outside receiver here. Um, Michigan recently offered. They are in contact. Um, and, you know, he's obviously a target. He's one of those recruitments that's going to be national. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, five-star um, Baton Rouge Catholic wide receiver uh, Shelton Sampson. Um, obviously, he's a Michigan target because they just offered. We'll see how much of a, of an impact Michigan kind of make. Ron Bellamy is taking over that recruitment. And, you know, Bellamy being from Louisiana can, can obviously – relate to Samson and, and we'll see if Michigan's able to um, even get him on campus and work and, and get him up. But he is technically a target, so I'm going to get him. So Shelton Samson's my guy. I pair him. You know, I, I still don't have a quarterback, but whoever it is, he's going to have Carnell Tate on one side, Shelton Samson on the other, and, and Petaway kind of across the middle. So I feel pretty good there. Um, and I guess, let's see. Probably need a safety. Those, yeah, it's getting into those tough rounds. You got to make, yeah. make the tough decisions. It's getting into the safeties. Um, I think I'm going to go with Michigan's top safety target here. I think I'm going to go ahead and take Derek Williams. Um, honestly, I don't know what 7-on-7 seven seven team he plays on. I haven't seen him with the bootleg. I've seen all three of the top Louisiana teams. I've seen F3 Elite. I've seen Louisiana Elite. And I've seen the bootleggers. And I've not seen him yet. So I'm assuming he's playing with the bootleggers. We'll find out. Um, but, uh, I feel good about Derek Williams, long rangy safety he can cover a lot of ground, you know, gives you a matchup, There's, especially against, you know, teams with, with tight ends. I think, you know, we obviously you have Nicholas Harbor. I think, you know, if you're, if you're going to try and, and take Nicholas out of the game, you need some size. And I think Derek can give me that. So going ahead and taking Derek Williams here. Cool. That's a good pick. I, uh, I obviously have to go on the defensive side of the ball and max out of picks <laughs> on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, last cycle was just so great for DBs. There were DBs all over the place. I think this cycle isn't as strong, but there's still a lot of quality options out there. Um, I am going with, I, I need some shutdown corners. Uh, my, my first pick on the defensive side of the ball is going to be Malik Muhammad uh, out of South Oak Cliff, Texas, uh, in the Dallas area. Uh, keeps in regular contact with Steve Klinkscale is looking to make a visit to Michigan. I think right now Notre Dame is considered the favorite, but he is very open to leaving the South. And he is a guy that, again, is in frequent contact with Klink and, and wants to make a visit out to Michigan. He plays uh, with Team Grind 
again in the Dallas area. I think he's one of the better just complete shutdown corners in this class. Um, and then I'm going with Caleb Presley, uh, who plays with FSP out of the Pacific Northwest. He's also very open to leaving his home region. He's a feisty uh, physical corner. He's not uh, your overwhelmingly tall or, or big, strong kid on the outside. He's more quick and fast, just like Muhammad. Uh, they build their games around their cover ability uh, and, and their feisty attitudes. I just really like what Presley and Muhammad both bring to the table. So they're going to go ahead and, and lock down my defense. Good stuff. Good stuff. I like it. Um, let's see. What do we have? I need two more DBs and an athlete. I still need a quarterback. I might as well go ahead and just take my quarterback here. Very limited options. Um, but might as well just get him off the board now. I'm going ahead and take CJ Carr. Um, also plays for Max X. Max, is, Max X's second team, just depending on the tournament. He rotates in and out with Dante, or he, or he leads the way for his own team. Um, and, uh, I've seen him in a couple of seven on seven settings, came away really impressed. He impressed me at the all American combine, even going all the way and winning the MVP of the whole event. Um, and so, yeah, I think CJ Carr is my guy. He's going to have a lot of help. He gets to throw to Jaden Lemar, Carnell Tate, Yaquas Pedway, and Shelton Sampson. So he just needs to get the ball in those guys' hands. Um, you know, he's, 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 he's a great, you know, uh, he's got a great deep ball, and I think that'll help here, especially with guys like Tate and Shelton that can really stretch the field. And then awesome. I've got one more pick on this side, and let's see. I'm thinking this could be like a flex pick between like a wide receiver slash tight end. I'm going to go ahead and put him at tight end. But Michigan's <laughs> tier one wide receiver target, Jaden Greathouse, Look massive... at him cheating. He's <laughs> taking Jaden Gray hey, out now. as a tight end. <laughs> hey, now, there are schools that are recruiting him as a tight end. <laughs> All we'll right, see. we'll allow it. <laughs> and in 7-on-7, seven seven, I would like to see him as a tight end. He is very filled out, standing at 6'2". I think he's 220, maybe even 230 as it stands. Um, just a massive frame. Um, and, uh, you know, if he continues, even if he grows like another inch or two, I think he legitimately does project play tight end at the next level. Um, but, uh, you know, he's another guy that can, uh, kind of stretch the field if he needs to very sure handed, um, was, uh, Clemson 2022 Clemson signee K club Knicks top receiver over at Austin Westlake. Um, and I've only seen him in that seven on seven setting playing for Westlake, um, in the Texas state seven on seven championships. Um, so, but I'm going with great house here and, uh, I, I feel pretty good about the pick. All right. So Tim's a cheater. Let's go ahead and get back to, <laughs> back to my picks. Uh, I'm going with, uh, I'm going, I'm actually going a class below. I'm going, I'm dipping into the 2024 class because I want to take the best DB in the 2024 class. I'm taking Desmond Ricks who plays with fast Houston at IMG Academy, uh, by way of the 757 Virginia beach. Uh, I really, really like Desmond Riggs. I think he's such a special underclassman. Michigan just jumped in the mix for him not too long ago. They're going to try to make some waves in that recruitment. And he is, even though he's playing for Fast Houston, he's not uh, from the Texas area, but Fast Houston uh, gets guys from all over the country, and uh, Ricks is one of them. So I'm really excited to see him here in the near future. I believe Tim will be seeing him this weekend. So uh, we'll let let him know that he's uh part of the the better squad uh, <laughs> right yeah so i'm taking desmond ricks uh as one of my dbs and then i am going to go with another uh another fast houston player another uh guy from uh from the rose simon squad shout out to to row one of the best fast one of the best seven on seven coaches in the country i'm going to take Jonel aguero um he's a a physical safety he's a, a really impressive specimen uh one of the better just overall athletes in the entire country a top 100 prospect um spent some time at img academy is now back in massachusetts he picked up a michigan offer extremely early in his recruitment uh, he's been trending to some schools down south uh, but Michigan recently got back in the recruiting picture for him. They're trying to get him on campus for a visit this spring. Uh, I love Aguero. I, I think even where he's ranked now, which I believe is in the 70s, is a little too low for him. I, I think he's a potential five-star guy. Uh, so he's definitely a great pick this late in the draft. 
I like it. I like it. You got three more picks, I believe, and I have four. So let's finish this out. Um, let's see. I need one athlete on offense, and I'm going to take a flex guy, a guy that can play potentially both sides of the ball if needed, a guy I saw at Battle Miami playing for SFE's second team as he is an underclassman. Um, so yes, like uh, taking a 2024 here, Josiah Trader out of Miami Central, uh, another Michigan target at the wide receiver position. Josiah is very shifty, very fast, um, and uh, can play both sides of the ball if needed. Really came away impressed with the sophomore film. Um, you know, it kind of moves schools in between there. So, um, you know, his tape's a little broken up, but you know, he's, he's a really impressive player. I really like what I saw from him playing for SFE's second team down in battle Miami um and again in, in case one of my guys on defense gets hurt he can slide over there too and uh you know take some uh and take some reps at corner if needed so that's that's what that's where I'm going with my first pick of this round and with my second pick I do need another DB I'll go with a guy I saw this weekend and I really really liked uh Bravion Rogers out of LaGrange um High four-star prospect in the 2023 class. I think he's ranked number 42 in the country in the on-three consensus. Uh, Michigan is st still very much involved in that recruitment. Uh, they're recruiting him as a true two-way player. So he's another one that, hypothetically, if I needed an offensive player, I can move him over there. Um, and, you know, Michigan's involved. They're going to try and get him on campus this offseason and try and see if they can... Uh, you know, make up some ground in some of the other schools involved in his recruitment. Nick Saban's recruiting him as a two-way player. I don't know how many Alabama players have ever played both sides of the ball, which just tells you kind of how special of a kid he is. So Rodgers is my guy right now. All right, so back to me. Um, I got two picks here, so I'm going with uh, my last two DBs. Um, I'm taking Braxton Myers out of Coppell by way of True Buzz 7-on-7. Seven seven. Uh, Braxton Myers is a big physical corner he fits the michigan mold he would be a great fit in the big 10 conference he can play safety as neat if needed as well uh, michigan is a top school for him they're an early leader he was on campus already he's planning to come back for an official visit i love where michigan stands i love him as a player um i think he is a terrific addition to my secondary so braxton myers uh for sure and my last uh pick in the secondary is more of a uh, I'm, I'm agreeing with Michigan's eval here. I'm going with a more underrated guy that I just absolutely love. I'm, I'm staying uh, true to the heart instead of just going off of rankings like Tim. Um, I'm going with Jair Hill uh, out of Kankakee, Illinois, uh, who is set to play some tournaments with Midwest Boom, has not yet due to track season. And that's the thing with uh, with Jair. He's he's an hour uh, about south of Chicago. Uh, so a lot of people haven't really seen him, but he's a legit 6'3", long, wiry kid, a junior Olympian, um, a guy that can do everything in the secondary, also played wide receiver, wildcat quarterback. I loved him in game. I'm excited to see him on the seven on seven circuit whenever he hits it with Midwest Boom. Uh, I had to take a guy from my hometown team, so definitely going with Jair Hill. Uh, I think he's he's the, the the late steal of the draft if our teams ever played against each other. <laughs> I love the pick. Jair is one of uh, one of my favorite guys Michigan's offered. I really do respect that they're trusting their eval on him and not trusting the rankings. Um, I'm gonna go in a similar route, somewhat of a, a lower rated guy in the in the in the sense of the word as far as guys Michigan has offered on the defensive side of the ball, specifically in the secondary. It's a very recent offer, but it's a big physical. Uh, safety out of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Marvin Brooks Jr. out of Cardinal Ritter College Prep. Uh, I'm just assuming he's going to play one of the St. Louis teams, if not Midwest Boom. Um, uh, I've not seen him on the 7-on-7 seven -seven circuit yet, but I love his tape. I think he's a long-range safety that can uh, that can give you some uh, matchup problems at, uh, at certain positions. And I, I like him kind of manning the back end alongside Derek Williams. I kind of want, you know, some size at safety, um, especially, you know, as, as receivers are, and tight ends are getting bigger and and more athletic so going with him there and then I have one athlete pick on the defensive side of the ball and I don't know where I'm gonna go with this one you know I might go with like a flex pick here I always like like this so so this weekend when I went to um the shock doctor Houston tournament 
Uh, shock, uh, the, the team that won it all was a team from California, the California Stars. They had Mateo Uyagalale playing center. I like having a big, big guy in the middle. You know, last year it was Deshaun McCullough that kind of did that for KB3. Um, I think Samuel and Pemba would be a very, yeah, very a solid inside, inside linebacker. Thing. Just against you know, especially against shorter quarterbacks, just kind of manning the middle of the field can literally jump jump up and get and get some uh, bat down some uh, throws, uh, and match up with some tight ends, match up with some wide receivers, and uh, I just kind of feel good about kind of having him and uh, having him and oh boy, I'm, I'm missing the name, having him and Raylan Wilson at middle linebacker uh, for my team. So going with those two and that about rounds out our teams, I believe. I think you we've made all our picks, correct? I have I have one more pick. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. You're good. Short, <laughs> last pick of the draft. Uh, no, and Pemba is a great pick because you could also stick him at tight end. Actually, I saw him as an underclassman playing with ESA Flight, and he was uh, fantastic as a tight end. I remember asking him, "Who's this humongous kid?" And they're like, "That's the eighth grader." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he, was, "He was so good." So uh, I love that. That's a sneaky uh, last pick. You know, my last pick is the number one linebacker in the country. I'm going with Troy Bowles, Team Tampa. I mean, to get the number one linebacker in the country uh, as my last pick, I- I'm really excited about it. I mean, he can uh, man the middle of my defense. I have not seen him live yet, but I- I'm planning to here in a few weeks. I'm, I'm planning to make a trip out there uh, to see him. So I'm excited about Troy Bowles being the the last pick of my defense. I need a linebacker, and why not end it with the best linebacker? Uh, sorry, Raylan. But I'm going with Troy Bowles. <laughs> but <laughs> no, um, that, that wraps it up for our team. So we'll we'll uh, run down our team list here as we exit. But before we do, Tim, wh- who are some guys you had on your short list that went undrafted for you that you're you're sad you didn't get on the team? There are a couple. Uh, Makari Vickers is one at safety. I really liked. Um, really considered putting him in. Uh, but I think you know, kind of, I I I was sold on Marvin Burke's tape a little more. Um, Kylan Jackson's a guy I've seen live now in seven on seven and I've really enjoyed his tape. He was another one at safety. Um, it's just, there's a lot of good safety options out there. So he was one at a linebacker, you know, I could only pick one, but, um, and this would have been cheating, but, but the Harris twins, Andrew and Michael Harris, um, <laughs> two guys that Michigan recently offered. I can't take both guys and I don't want to pick one without the other. So, you know, they remained unpicked and, uh, wide receiver is kind of a flex take, but a guy I really liked. Uh, that Michigan's in on, um, kind of similar to Jer Hill in the sense that Michigan's really trusting their eval there was Kai Preen um, out of Louisiana. He plays with the bootleggers. Um, he's a big physical guy who can play running back. If he, He's actually played running back through most of his high school career and is transitioning to wide receiver in seven on seven and for a senior season of high school and uh, is seen as a wide receiver in Michigan system and a couple other schools are do see him as a wide receiver. So he was another one that... Uh, went undrafted. The only other wide receiver I had that went undrafted was Bryson Rogers. Um, just another guy that, that is high on Michigan as well as a couple other schools, including Ohio State. Um, but he's a guy I really liked. Um, I liked his tape. I liked him in 7-on-7. Seven seven. And uh, yeah, I, I think he's just one that um, didn't make the cut from a from a size standpoint when you know, you're know comparing him to Carnell Tate or Sel- Shelton Sampson or even Jaden Greathouse. Yeah, I... Um... I had Bryson Rogers on my short list, but I just went with so many offensive guys early on that um, that I was just like, no, I, I can't really make that that pick. But but Bryson Rogers is a good one. I also had Cole Cabana on my list uh, just because he has a four three four forty time. I felt like I could stick him in somewhere, whether it was in the backfield or as a slot, but I, I wanted more pure receivers in my slots. Uh, that's why I picked Robbie Washington and, and Samaj Morgan. And then I, I just really wanted Trey on web. That's why I reached for him as a, a third rounder. I just, I love his skill set and, and everything he can do. So Cole Cabana, um, who actually ro- rose really high in the rankings elsewhere um, this month uh, was one guy uh, that I had on my list that went undrafted um, on the defensive side of the ball. I had recent offer Peyton Bowen. Um, he's a great player. Plus, it would have pissed off the Notre Dame fan base, which hates me. Um, but I, I think he's a, a great player on the back end. He plays with True Buzz alongside uh, Braxton Myers. But I just I haven't seen him enough to to warrant taking him. Um, but I think he's a guy that I would have would have picked um, had I not taken some of the other guys, uh, or some of the other guys wouldn't have fallen to me. Uh, and then another guy I had 
Um, that's just a big rangy safety is Dakari Nelson, who plays with Gas Crew, who you saw this weekend. I just wanted his his size and his length back there as an imposing player, but I decided to take more of a I think more of an elite athlete type in, in Janelle Aguero as my my bigger safety on the back end. But those were some of the guys on my short list. Um, let's go ahead and uh, and remind everybody of the teams that we had. So my offense is uh, Dante Moore. Trayon Webb, Jalen Brown, Samaj Morgan, Robbie Washington, Riley Williams, and Nicholas Harbor. My defense is Troy Bowles, uh, Caleb Presley, Malik Muhammad, Desmond Ricks, Janelle Aguero, Braxton Myers, and Jair Hill. Tim, what's your team? My team is quarterback CJ Carr, Jaden Lemar, Carnell Tate, Yaquez Pedaway, Shelton Sampson, Jaden Greathouse, and Josiah the Trader. On defense, I've got Raylan Wilson and Samuel Mpemba in the middle, Cormani McLean on one side, uh, uh, on my outside corner, Ethan Nation on the other side. I've got Bravian Rogers playing my slot corner. Him and Ethan can kind of switch, I guess. Um, and then safeties, I've got Derek Williams and Marvin Burks back there. Okay, I, I think my team is the clear winner, but we'll let the fans <laughs> decide in the comments. Remember to subscribe to the Wolverine.com. One dollar gets you premium access with more analysis and uh, feature stories and just great content over at the Wolverine. So make sure to sign up today. And like I said, go to the Wolverine on demand and order the recruiting edition of the Wolverine magazine.